<laughs> Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? So glad that you could join me again. Hey, good morning, family. Good morning. First of all, I would be remiss, and I want to do this and give a special shout out to a few people. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, I want to take the time and let you know that I'm happy that you joined me here in the crazy house. And you might say, well, why did we call it the crazy house? Because, listen, I don't know where it's safer, okay? I don't. Out is an asylum without walls, okay? And then when you walk into some of these institutions, it's an asylum with walls. So you take your pick. Okay? Anyways, I want to do a little high housekeeping. Um, and I think all the uh, information is in the low bar, I mean, in the uh, description below. But I want to take the time to welcome uh, Italists, Italists, it's list one. I think that's what you, what it is. How about Irene? Irene, I appreciate you for being out there. What about Nate Hector? I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much for joining me in this crazy house. I know you know it's crazy. <laughs> you know it's crazy and you wouldn't be here. Um, you too, Mr. Tyrone Bowman. I appreciate your presence. I like to talk with you. And Antron Bailey. Uh let's see. What about Nappy Scribe? I appreciate your presence. I like to talk with you as well. Some of y'all have left some really good comments that I like to um uh, um get your opinion and be you know converse with you. Uh, via phone, live stream. So I just want to give y'all a special shout out. And that's all of y'all. Rhonda, Alicia, Shaka, Zulu. My man, Jay Edwards. I appreciate y'all. Life Path 22E. Thank y'all all for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of my channel. How about Sneaker Game? Terry, Mullen, Brian, Mosley. I appreciate you, Brian. Thank you for being there. Thank you, Sneaker Game. Your Sneaker Game is tight. <laughs> and Terry Mullen. I appreciate you guys for joining me. And I wanted to make sure that I acknowledge y'all and let you know, because a lot of times I got so much going on. Um, I don't get a chance to answer or some of the comments, but you know I'm coming because so I know that some of the comments that I comment to may be a week late. I try to get to them as fast as I can. However, I want to acknowledge your presence because I really appreciate y'all being out there. And for those, and encourage y'all to comment more on the page. That's what I really wanted to do. Now, now that I got that out of the way, because that is part of the housekeeping. Yeah, let me stop him. Does he? Okay. Um, whatever is hidden away will be brought out into the open, and whatever is covered up will be uncovered. That's Mark 4 and 22. Okay. 
But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, codependency. I always like to call us adult children or children of adult children of, of abuse. Because a lot of times we find out because our parents didn't really have a role model. I mean, they didn't have Oprah, okay? And a lot of them had children so young and they were forced into a responsibility real young as well. I mean, you have 14, 15, 16 year olds being married. Um, so I would think that that was a society at that point that was governed to, if you lived in Southern society, it was, it was, um, it, they encouraged you to have a lot of children so you could have them work out in the fields. Okay. Because it was a more agriculture based society. Now it is more tech technology based. I, yeah, I say that's what we call it, you know, uh, and you look at how the rules have changed in terms of your children. Now, when you have a lot of children and you're not able to give them what they need in order to, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with money. Usually always it's emotional and mental. And when you're not able to give them what they need, because of whatever reason, you you know, you may have relationship problems or you just don't know. What happens is you create adult children. So unless somebody breaks the cycle and even acknowledges that this is what has happened generation after generation, then it continues. And this is what we try to do. We try to break the cycle on this uh, channel. So, because we all going through life and ain't nobody got, I know I don't have all the answers at all, but I can tell you what I know so far. Okay. And there's a lot of you out there who have a lot of wonderful ideas and understand this stuff because you've been through it and your opinions are so valuable to people that are coming up going, Hey, what the hell is going on? My mom is sitting there, you know, always treating me and always uh, treating my brother better than he treats me and blah 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 this and the other. Well those of us who came from the ironing core beaten generation we can tell you a lot we can also tell you a lot of us will tell you that wasn't right and now if we got enough sense and if it didn't damage us too bad we can see where that came from beating your kids like they like you were crazy with ironing cords and straps and all types of crazy shit. Anyway, and I digress. Let me go forward. Um, but this is taken from that uh, John, John, John and Linda Friel, the uh, Secrets of Dysfunctional Families. And again, it's John and Linda Friel. But I find a lot of it, um, I find books like this very informative on my journey to, of, of healing. Okay. And I thank God for every day that I wake up on this side of the dirt. But there's still another day of grace that I have to heal from the, from the damage that was done to me willingly, unwillingly knowingly or not okay and i have a responsibility to make sure that the cycle is broken for the next generation okay now we have used the term codependency a few times in our lives of course um it is likely that many of you who read this book are familiar with the term Okay, or who hear this? Many of you perhaps use the word several times a day, despite the fact that we are probably best known 
for our research and clinical work in the area of codependency, we felt that it was important to hold off on any discussion of it until this point in the book because there's a lot of confusion surrounding the term codependency. We believe that the term codependency has been and still is in a state of evolution. Codependency originally meant the spouse, lover, or significant other of someone who is chemically dependent. At the beginning point of its evolution, it was simple to understand. Whether you had any symptoms yourself or not, you were involved somehow with a chemically dependent person. Okay? Then you were a codependent. That's what it was at first. But since those uh, simpler days, earlier days, codependency has taken on a life and an identity all of its own. Many professionals now feel that codependency is a specific diagno diagnostic term, diagnostic term, which refers to a specific set of emotional and behavioral symptoms. Okay. Robert Subby and John Frio def defined it as a dysfunctional pattern of living, which a dysfunctional way and a pattern of living, which has, was learned by a set of rules within the family system. Let me repeat that. It is, it is as a dysfunctional pattern of living which was learned by a set of rules within the family system. Okay. Enlisting the symptoms of codependency, we and others most often look at issues such as caretaking or over-responsibility to others as an inability to care for the self appropriately, difficulty in identifying and expressing feelings, swinging from too nice to angry and abusive, over-focusing on others while under-focusing on ourselves, identity development problems and getting into abusive and or confusing relationships. In codependency, we do not believe that we have choices, which produces a painful feeling of stuckness. Along with this symptom is a lot of compulsiveness, too. So, in the seminars, they often um, say, in our codependency, we don't know how to start, and we don't know how to stop. Hmm. Our own work in this area began in 1982 when we likened the codependency to paradoxical dependency, in which we appear strong, competent, and emotionally healthy on the outside, but really feel confused, lost, lonely, and dependent on the inside. How many of y'all ever experienced that? Feel very confident when you outside doing your thing or doing your job or doing whatever. But when it comes to your personal, your relationships, your one-on-one -on -one intimate relationships, oh, you have problems. So I, <clears throat> let me... Loosen up the tie a little bit. That those were issues, and those are issues that I struggle with. Okay. As you on your journey to healing, you're able to point out. You're able to see your life more clearly. Okay. So there was one time I don't think that. I think healing is a process. This is just my opinion. 
So I don't think it's a one size fit all, but <clears throat> there are certain ways that I felt more concerned about my significant other than I did myself. Okay. And a lot of times when you look at some of these relationships, that's exactly what you see. And it could be codependent on the family you, uh, itself. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the intimate um, personal relationship. It could be, geez, again, your immediate family, your siblings, your parents. <laughs> um, our own work in this area. Okay, I, I, I mean this. This is very, very. I don't know how far I want to go with this, but the main thing I wanted to get through was. Confusion develops over the concept because one of the common symptoms of untreated codependency is simply chemical dependency. In fact, it has been our clinical experience and that of many professionals of whom we communicate that mostly chemically dependent and addicted people are also codependent beneath their addiction. Did y'all hear that? So, for the acts, the, the addicts that we have in our homes and in our families and that are present in our lives, There, right there, is the catalyst for knowing that there is underneath that is codependent behavior. And the family is like a mobile. A mobile, you know, that sits over the baby's crib. You hit one thing and everything kind of shifts around. you begin to see the unit more clearly. I'm going to cut this off right here and I'm going to uh, come back with a part two. But I think it's real important that we all think about what that codependency relationship means. Uh, because sometimes it's so psychotic that When you have it collectively as a group, codependent, whether you codependent on the pain, the being stuck and not moving forward, to think this is how it has to be, then you got a community that's suffering from codependency. Think about it, family. So I'll be back, and I'll see you in the next video. But before I go, if you like what you hear, please subscribe. Please share. Share the video, and I thank you for being out there. And we'll see you in the next video.